In this lesson, we want to review multiplying and dividing rational expressions. So when we multiply and divide rational expressions, we use the same rules that we learned when we studied how to multiply and divide fractions. So to kind of get our feet wet here, we're going to look at a very simple problem to start. We're going to look at 1 fourth times 2 sevenths. So how would we multiply these two fractions together? So recall that kind of we can just go across. So we can go numerator times numerator. So 1 times 2 is 2. And this is over denominator times denominator. So 4 times 7 is 28. Now this leaves us with an unsimplified answer. We have 2 over 28. Each is divisible by 2. So if I divide 2 by 2, I get 1. If I divide 28 by 2, I get 14. Right? So this would simplify into 1 14. Now this isn't the simplest way to go about things. The best way to multiply two fractions together is to make sure that you are completely simplified before you start multiplying, okay? So what I really want to do here, if I want the best result, I want to go through and make sure that each fraction is simplified first. So between 1 and 4, can I do anything, right? Is there a common factor other than 1? No. Between 2 and 7, is there a common factor other than 1? No. Then I want to look and see, can I cross cancel? So I'm going to look at this numerator and this denominator. Anything common other than one? No. Then I want to look at this numerator and this denominator. Anything common other than one? Well, yes, in this case, I have a two and I have a four, four factors and a two times two. So two times two, so I can cancel one factor of two here with this two here. And now if I multiply across, I'd have one times one, which is one, and then two, which is my simplified denominator, times seven would give me 14. So this is a better approach because I get a simplified answer here. I don't have to get an answer and then simplify it, right? It's already done for me. So we're gonna use a similar thought process when we look at an example here for multiplying rational expressions. Now, before I jump in and explain how we do this, I wanna make something crystal clear. So a very common mistake in algebra is to try to cancel things that can't be canceled. So we all know if we have something like 6 over 18, I can factor 6 as 2 times 3, and I can factor 18 as 3 times 3 times 2, okay? Now, I can cancel common factors. So 3 is a factor and 2 is a factor. Let me make that clear. So these are factors, okay? They are multiplying each other. And then these are factors, right? They're multiplying each other. So these are all factors. So we can cancel common factors. So what do we got? We got a common factor of two between numerator and denominator. We can cancel that. Two over two we know is one. We can cancel a common factor of three between numerator and denominator. Three over three is one. So this becomes one over three or one third. So most of us understand that process. It's very, very simple. Now, what if I showed you something like this? What if I showed you three plus four over three? A lot of you realize that you can't cancel the three there. Right? This is addition. This is 3 plus 4. That's 7 over 3. It's 7 thirds. Right? So if I undo this cancellation and I write this as it is, 3 plus 4 is 7. This would be 7 over 3. So 7 thirds would not be equal to, again, if you cancel these 3s, you just have a 4. That's not the same. Okay? So it doesn't work that way. Now, it's easy to understand that, but when you start involving variables, students get very, very confused. So if you see something like x minus 1 inside of parentheses next to x minus 3 inside of parentheses, you need to understand that these two quantities are multiplying each other. So x minus 1 is a quantity, it is an amount. x minus 3 is also a quantity or an amount. So these two are factors, okay? They are factors. And it's tough to think about them as factors because you have that minus sign in there, or in some cases you have a plus sign in there, but they're still factors, okay? They have parentheses that are surrounding them. They are multiplied by each other. So let's say this was over something like x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 5. So again, these are factors here. This quantity x minus 1 is multiplied by the quantity x minus 5. So these are factors. Again, we can cancel common factors. So this x minus 1 here can cancel with this x minus 1 down there. We're left with just x minus 3, x minus 3 over x minus 5. So that's completely legal. That's something you can do. Again, because of the parentheses, these guys are multiplying each other. 
Let's see if you can understand this. If you have x plus y plus 5, let's say, over, let's say, x plus y plus 2. You need to understand that you can't cancel this with this. Okay, it doesn't work that way. Even if you were to wrap it inside of parentheses, this is addition here. This is x plus y, this quantity, which is added to the number 5. This is x plus y, this quantity, which is added to the number 2. You can't just cancel. If I was to put next to this something that was multiplied by, so inside of parentheses, let's say x minus 2 over, let's say, x minus y, now I can cancel. This is straight multiplication, okay? This quantity is multiplied by this quantity. This quantity is multiplied by this quantity. This is no different than if I had 3 times 4 over 3 times 7, okay? These can cancel and these can cancel. They are common factors, okay? So please understand that that's when you can cancel is when you have a common factor. All right, so let's look at our sample problem or our first sample problem. We have 3x squared minus 2x minus 8 over 3x squared plus 14x plus 8. This is multiplied by 3x plus 2 over 3x plus 4. So the whole idea here is to factor everything completely, look to see what you can cancel between each rational expression, and then look to see what you can cross cancel, and then if you have to, you would multiply, okay? So if I start with this guy right here in the numerator, I'm just going to use reverse foil for everything because this guy here is a prime number. So 3x squared can only come from 3x times x. And then my last term of negative 8 tells me I have a plus and a minus for my signs. So what are the factors of 8? Forget about the fact that it's negative. You got 1 and 8 and you got 2 and 4. So I need to get the proper middle term of negative 2x. How can I do that? Well, if I did 2 and 4, could I make that work? Well, yeah. If I put a 4 here and a 2 here, right, the outer would be negative 6x, the inner would be plus 4x, so that would give me the correct middle term. All right, what about this denominator here? How can we factor this? Again, I'm going to put a 3x here and an x here. That's the only way you're going to get 3x squared. I've got a final term of plus 8, and the middle term is plus, so I know this is going to be a plus and a plus. All right, all my signs are going to be positive. So I've got 1 and 8 or 4 and 2. So what do I want to do? Well, I'm going to need 3x to multiply by 4. That's going to give me 12x. And I'm going to need 2 to multiply by x to give me 2x. So the outer would be 12x. The inner would be 2x. That would give me my 14x. Then this is multiplied by 3x plus 2 over 3x plus 4. Now, I'm going to show you something that's going to make this a little easier for you mentally. This guy right here, there's nothing next to it, right? You can wrap this in parentheses and put times 1, okay? There's nothing illegal about that. And that'll get you past the mental roadblock of understanding what's multiplication, where are the factors, things like that, right? Because if you just see this by itself, when you're first starting out, you might think, oh, I can't cancel that because it's not a factor. Yeah, you can. You can wrap this in parentheses and say times 1, okay? Just like that. So now I want to look for what I can cancel. So I see that I have 3x plus 4 here. I can cancel with 3x plus 4 there. Okay, we're just cross-canceling common factors. And then I also see that I have a 3x plus 2 here that will cancel with the 3x plus 2 there. So all I'm really left with is x minus 2 over x plus 4. So I have x minus 2 over x plus 4, and that's my answer. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have x squared plus 9xy plus 14y squared over x squared plus 7xy plus 10y squared. And this is multiplied by x squared plus 2xy minus 15y squared over x squared minus xy minus 6y squared. So pretty easy to factor these guys. Everything has a leading coefficient of 1. For the top guy, let's go ahead and set up our parentheses. I would have an x here and an x here. With the second variable, just go ahead and write a y here and a y here, and then just forget about it. Just think about the coefficients. So give me two integers that sum to 9 and multiply to 14. That's, of course, 7 and 2. Okay, that's really easy. Okay, down here, I'm going to set up my parentheses. I need an x here and an x here. Again, if I've got two variables, just put a y and a y and forget about it. You don't need to think about it again. 
Give me two integers now whose sum to 7 and multiply to 10. Really easy. That's 5 and 2. Okay, so that's done over there. So now let's set up our parentheses for this guy over here. And I'll just go ahead and set these up here. So in each case, I have an X and a Y that are going to go in this position and this position. Okay, pretty simple, right? And I made that look like a Y. This is an X. Right, because you have X squared as the leading and you have a Y squared at the final. Okay, so that comes from X times X. That gives you the X squared and Y times Y gives you the Y squared in each case. Now, all I need to do in the numerator, I'm looking for two integers that sum to two and give me a product of negative 15. So I'm gonna be looking for five and three, but I need to make sure one of them is positive and one of them is negative. You want the larger one in terms of absolute value to be positive because this ends up being positive. So I want plus five and minus three. Then down here, let me kind of tighten that up a little bit. Let me make this all better. So down here, I'm looking for a sum of negative one and a product of negative six. So I can do that with a negative three and a positive two, okay? So I've factored everything and once you've factored this stuff, it's pretty much easy from here. They make a lot of these problems to where a lot of stuff cancels. Sometimes you do need to do a little bit of multiplication, but it's kind of rare actually. A lot of times they just make it to where enough stuff cancels and then you just kind of report your answer. So with this guy right here, we have a common factor of x plus 5y that we can cancel. We have a common factor of x plus 2y that we can cancel. Then we have a common factor of x minus 3y that we can cancel. So what do we end up with? Well, we just end up with x plus 7y over here I'm going to have x plus 2y. And that's my answer. All right, let's think a little bit about division now. So we know when we divide fractions, we take the first fraction and we multiply it by the reciprocal of the second. So for something like this, I would just take 6 elevenths and I would multiply it by the reciprocal of this. Again, just interchange the numerator and the denominator. So 33 goes in the numerator, 4 goes in the denominator, right? Just flip the fraction. So now, can I cross cancel? 6 is divisible by 2, so is 4. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 33 and 11 are each divisible by 11. 33 divided by 11 is 3. 11 divided by 11 is 1. So this ends up giving me 9 from 3 times 3 over 2, right? So this is 9 halves. All right, so we're going to follow the same process here with our division with rational expressions. I'm going to take this guy right here and multiply it by the reciprocal of this guy. So if you want, you can factor it first, but I like to just kind of flip it first just to get that set up. So we would have x squared minus 9x plus 14 over, you would have 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 multiplied by the reciprocal of this. So we'd have x squared minus 4x plus 3 over, you would have x squared minus 2x minus 35, okay? Again, just flip this guy. This guy is going to go into the numerator. This guy is going to go in the denominator, right? We just interchange the numerator and denominator, and then we're ready to go. So now it's just a multiplication problem, just like we did in the last two examples. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to factor everything and see what I can cancel. So x squared minus 9x plus 14, we'll do this as this and this. So x and x, two integers that sum to negative 9 and give me a product of positive 14. That's going to be negative 7 and negative 2. Then for this guy right here, let's go ahead and set up our parentheses. We have a 2x squared, so that comes from 2x times x. We need an outer and an inner product that give us a sum of 3x. So this guy right here plus this guy right here has the sum to 3x. Now, my final term is negative 5. That can only come from 1 times negative 5 or negative 1 times positive 5. Now, if I put the 5 here, either way that's going to be too big, right? Whether it's positive 5 or negative 5, it's going to be too big in terms of absolute value to get to this guy. So forget about that. It's going to have to be a 5 here and a 1 here. Now, what would the sign be? Well, we want to end up with a positive. So let's put a plus here and a minus here, right? Because 2x would multiply by negative 1 and give me negative 2x. 
five times X would give me plus five X. If you sum these guys, you're gonna end up with your three X as the middle term. Okay, let's work on this side over here. So X squared minus four X plus three. That's pretty easy to factor. Two integers that sum to negative four and have a product of three would be minus three and minus one. Then we're looking for X squared minus two X minus 35. So this is X and X. Two integers that sum to negative two and have a product of negative 35. You want different signs there. And basically, you think about 35 as five times seven. So you want it to be negative seven because this guy in the middle is negative, right? So it's the number with the larger absolute value that gets the negative because we end up with a negative sum. So negative seven and positive five. Okay, so now that we've factored everything, what can we cancel? We got an X minus seven here that can cancel with an X minus seven here. And we've got an X minus one here that can cancel with an X minus one here. Now, everything didn't cancel like it did in the previous two examples. So we actually have to do some multiplication now. What I'm gonna tell you is that it is perfectly acceptable to leave this as the quantity X minus two times the quantity X minus three like this over the quantity two X plus five times the quantity X plus five. You can see that there's nothing else that can be canceled, right? So this is considered simplified. But for the sake of completeness, you could also write it as what? X times X is X squared. The outer would be minus three X. The inner would be minus two X. So negative three X minus two X would be minus five X. And then the last would be negative two times negative three, which is plus six. So X squared minus five X plus six. This is over. Down here, you'd have two X times X, which is two X squared. The outer would be plus 10 X. So plus 10 X. The inner would be plus five X. So if you combine those, you would get plus 15 X. And the last five times five is 25. So plus 25. So either answer is acceptable. You can put X squared minus five X plus six over two X squared plus 15 X plus 25. I would prefer this answer because it shows nothing else will cancel. So you can put the quantity X minus two times the quantity X minus three over the quantity two X plus five times the quantity X plus five. All right, for the last problem, we're gonna look at something that's a little bit tedious. Not too bad though. X squared minus Y squared over the quantity X minus Y squared then times we have X squared minus XY plus Y squared over X squared minus two XY plus Y squared. Then this is divided by X cubed plus Y cubed over the quantity X minus Y to the fourth power. So I'm gonna say this is equal to, and I'm just gonna rewrite everything. I'm gonna deal with this division first. So I'm gonna say this is X squared minus Y squared over the quantity X minus Y squared. Then times we have this guy X squared minus XY plus y squared, then over, we have x squared minus 2xy plus y squared, then times, right? My division here, I'm gonna write as times the reciprocal. So this will go in the numerator. So we'll have the quantity x minus y to the fourth power over, we have x cubed plus y cubed. All right, so what can we do here? Well, we know we can factor a lot of these using our special factoring formulas, right? This guy right here is the difference of two squares, x squared minus y squared. So I know I can factor this into x plus y times x minus y. Down here, please don't think this is x squared minus y squared. It is not. I can't stress this enough. I know I covered this in a previous video, but I see this so often, I need to say it twice. This is not equal to x squared minus y squared. Please don't try to distribute this. That is wrong. Okay, don't do it. You can only do that with multiplication, okay? This guy right here needs to be expanded. You have the quantity X minus Y squared. So you have two of those, okay, two of those. So this is X minus Y times X minus Y. Okay, that's what that is. Then we're multiplying by, we have X squared minus XY plus Y squared. Can we factor this? Can you give me two integers that sum to negative one and give me a product of one? No, you cannot, so this can't be factored. We have x squared minus xy plus y squared. This is over. For this guy, you should notice that this is a binomial squared, right? You have this guy squared and this guy squared, and this is minus two times the first guy that's squared times the last guy that's squared. 
In other words, I could write this as x minus y quantity squared. This guy gets squared, this guy gets squared, and it's minus, right, because of the minus sign there, 2 times this guy times this guy. So that's where you get your minus 2xy. So I would have two of those. So I can just go ahead and write this as x minus y, again, times x minus y. All right. So for this guy up here, I have x minus y to the fourth power. So I would have four of those. So x minus y, x minus y, x minus y. And I'm going to run out of room here. So let me kind of scooch this stuff down. And let me make this a little better. And x minus y. OK, fit it on the screen. And we have x cubed plus y cubed, which we can factor as the sum of cubes. Right? We can use that formula. So remember, that guy, the first sign is the same. So it's going to be x plus y. Then the second sign is different. So you get x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. OK? Let me kind of scooch this over a little bit. Now, looking at everything, what can we cancel? Let's just kind of go through things. We have x plus y. Do I have any x plus y's? Yes, I do. So I can cancel this with this, OK? Just cross canceling. I have x minus y here. That will cancel with x minus y here. I have x minus y here. That will cancel with x minus y here. I have x minus y here. That will cancel with x minus y here. x minus y here. That will cancel with x minus y here. OK. So now I also have this guy. I can wrap it in parentheses. And I can cancel this guy with this guy. Those are the same. So what am I left with? Well, I'm just left with this x minus y here. That's all I've got left. So my answer here would just be x minus y. So a pretty simple process overall. When we're multiplying and dividing rational expressions, we use the same rules that we learned with fractions. The tedious part here is just getting through the factoring, right? But as long as you're a pro at factoring, this is a very, very simple process.